Give it up. Michael Porter! <laughs> 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 Before I get started, my mother is here. <laughs> First time ever she's seen me do stand up. Yeah. Also, last time ever she's been watching me stand up. <laughs> Just gonna go sideways real quick. Also, my brother's here, flew in from Texas for the show. Woo! <laughs> Don't talk for him, fuck him, you shouldn't have moved to Texas in the first place. <laughs> I, uh, I think we should start a trend where we start giving uh, bad news in knock-knock jokes. I don't, uh, I don't like giving bad news, I don't like getting bad news, but I think if we do it in knock-knock jokes, it'll sort of ease, you know, the pain of giving or getting it. For example, knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? Gone. Gone. <laughs> Your test results have come back. <laughs> you have gonorrhea. <laughs> Better. Knock, knock. Who's there? Bone. 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 I think we should break up. <laughs> because you no longer give me a boner. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Not your white blood cells. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you, uh, you watch porn, sir? <laughs> or, wait, let me rephrase that. Sorry. When you watch porn. <laughs> when, uh, when, when, have you ever, you ever come across a video of a, a person who you sort of like re resemble somebody in real life? You're like, oh, snap, like, I was watching a video, and this lady kind of looked like my 10th grade chemistry teacher, and I was like, nice, that's a good treat, you know? <laughs> but it, it works the other way, because my sister has ruined so many porn videos for me. Like, I can't watch, like, nerdy brunette with glasses porn at all. <laughs> like, it's ruined. Like, I tried, I tried one time, you know, and I was like, you know what, I know it's not my sister, I'm going to still want to watch the video. So I'm watching it, she takes her, her, she starts making out with a dude, takes her top off, and I'm like, motherfucker, damn it, she'd have the same tits as my sister. <laughs> that is an incest joke. No <laughs> fit. That, that joke kills in Chris Steele. <laughs> no, no, no. Not, not, not because it's an incest joke, but because everybody in Chris Steele has seen my sister's tits. <laughs> That joke was the litmus test to see how we're going to go tonight, and I think we're going to be okay. So, I, uh, I found porn on one of my son's Kindles. He was eight. Did you know eight-year-olds can get boners? Do not answer that, you'll go straight to jail. I know there's at least one cop here, and then you have to explain to my mother why you know eight-year-olds get boners. So I was put into bed, it was me and my two boys, and my wife was at work that night, and I happened to stumble across his Kindle and his porn, and I was, I knew at some point in time as a dad in these days that I was going to have to have the porn talk with my children, and I expected it to be like when they were 12 or 13 or 14, and I'd be like, hey kids, just so you know, there's videos on the internet called porn, and they basically show you everything that your girlfriend or wife will not do. <laughs> but he's, he's eight, so I have to go a different approach, and I just go into his room and I say, uh, son, uh, what, uh, why are you watching these videos? You're not supposed to be watching these videos. Why are you watching these videos? And he says, I wanted to know how babies were made. Oh. Okay, that, you know, let me ask you a question, son. You, you know your mom's a nurse, right? Yeah. Yes. You know she There's babies, right? <laughs> yes. Why didn't you ask your mom where babies came from? Why didn't you ask me? I've made two babies. 
minimum. <laughs> and, if, and if you want to know where babies remain, why are all the videos on your Kindle ain't no videos? <laughs> I, I don't know if they were or not. I, I deleted uh, the videos as quickly as I could. I had no desire to find out what my eight-year-old's kid was. Like, what if, what if some of these videos like resembled his mother? You know, like, what am I supposed to say to him then? Like, I don't even jerk off to people who resemble his mother. <laughs> so we 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 had, we had a good talk. I'm like, well, I'm in this mode. Let me go over to my ten-year-old's room, check his Kindle. So I checked my ten-year-old's Kindle. Squeaky clean, no problems. Fantastic. I said, but while I'm here, let me change some settings on the Kindle. You know, I said, son, what's your password? And he says, oh, it's easy. It's my favorite Pokemon character. Capital E, E, V, E, E. E, V. I go, great. Change some settings. Lock it down. Go back to my eight-year-old room. Say, son, I forgot to change some settings. What's your password, please? He says, capital R, A, P, E, R. I go, what? He goes, what? Rapper. <laughs> it isn't. Uh, I mean, it's not even close. I don't know. I mean, maybe R. Kelly's more R&B. <laughs> not really a rapper. So, but I, this was another conversation that I was not prepared to have with my eight-year-old. So I fucking left it. So, I'm pretty sure to this day, it's still Raper. <laughs> so I have the two boys, who are now 12 and 10, and uh, when I had the first one, I, I didn't I think I wanted to have two. You know, when the first one came out, and, and some of you have kids, uh, might have the same feeling, but when my first one came out, I was so in love with him, so obsessed, like, my heart was full, my life felt complete. Like I was almost angry with myself that I waited so long, like to have kids, you know. And he was just he was amazing, and I loved him. And a year went on, and just the, my love for him grew and grew and grew. And after about a year or so, my wife was like, "We should probably talk about having a second kid." I said, "That's fine." I said, "I'm being honest with you, though. Like, what if I don't have enough love in my heart for a second kid? Like, what if you know I don't love him the same?" And my wife was like, you'll be fine. And I said, okay. And a year or so later, uh, out came our second boy. Uh, came out and held him for the first time. And he looked at me and I looked at him. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's the thing about my 12-year-old. He is the perfect miniature version of me. He is very smart. He is uh, okay at athletics. He's uh, a little overweight, and uh, he uh, thinks he's better looking than he actually is. <laughs> My ten-year-old is an asshole. <laughs> if, if you hang out with him, like just for a little bit, like you'll see this level of like douchebaggery, and then look in his eyes and be like. Oh shit, this kid's gonna play lacrosse one day. <laughs> Which I probably should have figured out just based on his Kindle password. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, no, here's the thing about my 10 year old he is he's a very good looking young man. He just wakes up good looking, doesn't even try. He's very good at athletics, can play any sport he wants. He's got a very big and kind heart. Um, unless your name is mommy or daddy. <laughs> and for a 10 year old, he has an unusually large penis. <laughs> <laughs> These are four things he did not get from me. <laughs> Where did that penis come from? <laughs> Some, someone definitely explained it to you. <laughs> That's not my penis. <laughs> as, as my wife, uh, being a nurse, uh, when my kids were toddlers, um, we, we taught them about their anatomy and that boys have a penis, and that's the word that we use, which was penis, because that's the proper name for it. 
Uh, I understand there's some parents out there who, for whatever reason, are embarrassed to say the name penis, uh, so they give like a nickname, like a weenie or a winky or a pickle. Don't do that, people. There's no penis. That's, that's a problem. That's what they're going to learn about when they go to school in health class. It's going to be called a penis. Like, if you're old enough to have kids, you should be mature enough to just call it a penis. Like, that's it, you know? So when my, when my oldest boy was like four or five, he knew he had a penis. He was like, Mom, I have a penis. And he said that my brother has a penis, and Dada has a penis, and our two cats, Tiger and Wolf, they both have penises. He says, that's five penises in the house, Mom. Now, I've been asked on a number of occasions, like, how does my wife stay sane in a house with all males? And I tell people, like, she loves it. She would not have any other way. Being surrounded by all these penises remind her of being back in high school. <laughs> so my, my five-year-old is like, five penises in the house, mama. And he says, but mama, you don't have a penis. He says, you have fur. <laughs> and, and that was the moment I realized that we never taught my kids about the female anatomy. So, like, oh, shit. so I had to sit them down and be like, look, son, it's not called fur. And your little brother's going to find out when he's eight by watching certain videos on a Kindle that not every girl has fur. So I told him, I was like, boys have a penis and girls have a whisker biscuit. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, I actually told him it was called uh, beef curtains. <laughs> so we uh, we recently got a dog, a uh, female dog. So you know we're mixing it up now. So now it's a high school. We had the girl. So now my wife goes she's in college. But. <laughs> Anyway, so my two boys and my dog, like, they all have the same size poop, which makes it increasingly difficult to figure out who keeps shitting in my dining room. <laughs> like, I think it's the dog, but I have not ruled out my 10-year-old. I, uh, when, when I was asked to do this show, I, uh, I told my boys, I'm very excited about it. I was like, hey, I got a show, you know, near the house in Salisbury. And my 12-year-old, he goes, that makes sense, that you have to leave the house to find people who think you're funny. <laughs> and then my 10-year-old chimes in and says, you know what? I actually don't think you're funny at all. I think me and my brother are funny, and you just tell people the funny things we do. <laughs> and I said, fuck you, go to your room. Go to your room. <laughs> They're on to me. I hang out with them just so I can find the funny shit that they do. <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, it was a, the Christmas before COVID, uh, I had to take my kids Christmas shopping, and it was just the three of us. And as a you know, husband and a father, uh, you know, we sometimes wait to the last minute, and so it was late-ish. Um, and I'm like, look, we got to go all day. We got outlets, lunch, shopping. Like we do the whole thing. I need you guys to like man up and just, you know, stay with me here. Um, and I said, also because it's Christmas time, a lot of people would be stressed out. You know, they might be in bad moods, who knows? And there's some people out there who might even get mad at us if we say Merry Christmas. <laughs> or other people who might get mad at us for saying Happy Holidays, who knows? So I told them, since half our family is Swedish, that we were gonna wish everybody a Merry Christmas in Swedish. So all day long, at all the stores, um, you know, the register people, the people stocking shelves, the customers holding doors for us, the young lady at Chick-fil-A who took our lunch order, uh, my kids, Visa Kukin, Visa Kukin, Visa Kukin, all day long. <laughs> now I know how to say two things in Swedish, <laughs> neither of them were Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I know how to say is the end all be all worst bad word ever in Swedish. It's so bad that apparently they don't even say it in Sweden at all. Like, it's terrible. The second thing I know how to say is visa kuken, which means, show me your dick. <laughs> which, which is really nice when you go to Chick-fil-A and they're like, my pleasure. <laughs> so good. About, uh, 
about six years ago, uh, a guy I worked with, he passed away, and he lived alone, and uh, we didn't know he had a cat. And so like, we're gonna do the cat. I'm like, I'll, I'll take the cat. Like, so I have two other cats. I'll stick him in the, uh, the guest room, and he was scared to death of everybody and everything. And he was this really good looking, tuxedo colored cat, you know, black top, white bottom, but he hid behind the sofa bed. And we had him in the, in the guest room for a month or two, and every night I would go in, and I would pet him, and I would, you know, talk to him, and that sort of thing. And uh, my oldest son, who was probably six at the time, would come in sometimes, and then pet him, and then we'd talk. And after about a month, my son was like, can we name him? I was like, yeah, sure, like, we, we didn't even know this guy had a cat, we don't know what his name is, so you can name him whatever you want. So what do you want to name him? So the cat hid behind the sofa, and the door looks down, and he goes, I go, what do you want to name him? He goes, how about Blackie? <laughs> I go, ah, not, not a real big fan of that name, you know? Like, I just came to see the black head and the black body and the black tail. Like, what else you got for me? And he goes, what about Darky? <laughs> Son, I feel like you're heading in the wrong direction here. Like, I'm, I'm going to give you a third chance right here, and I swear to God that the next name out of your mouth is Porch Kitty. I'm going to fucking lose my shit. And he says, what, what about Smokey? I go, Soul, Smokey, done. There we go. I don't think there's anything racist or racist adjacent about Smokey. I don't think. I say that because I don't know. Like, I know the rules are changing these days, and I'm not sure what is and what. Like, I thought I knew. No, I mean, not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm older, so I'm from a different kind of generation. I know it's not an excuse. But like I've had these thoughts in my head for like 30 years, which I've never thought were racist, and now I'm like, oh shit, are they racist? Like because, for example, if I'm like ever walking down the street and there's like a black guy walking towards me, or if I get into an elevator and there's like a black guy in there and it's just the two of us, the first thing I always think is, I wonder how big his cock is. <laughs> like is that racist? Like does that make me racist or does that make me gay? Or like bi or transgender fluid bounces. That, that, I, I, don't, I don't know. You, you know what's getting out of hand? Uh, gender reveals. Gender reveal parties are getting out of hand. Like it's too much. People are dying. People, like I read a story about a guy in New York who was building a contraption for his kids' gender reveal party, and. He blew himself up. Like, and like the article didn't say if it was a boy or a girl that was, you know, that was his kid. But I mean, we can assume when it was born, it was, you know, half moron. <laughs> um, it's too much. If, if I were a girl and I were pregnant and I were having a gender reveal party, I would just have a cake and inside the cake would be like dark chocolate just to see if anybody picked up on it. <laughs> Or, like, you know what I think too in the doctor's office, like if I was a doctor, you know, people would come in and be like, they want to know the sex of the baby, sometimes I'd have like a little button, and a little puff of blue smoke, or a little puff of pink smoke, sometimes a little puff of black smoke, you know, and then the husband would be like, what the fuck, black smoke, we're having a black baby? Like, I think we're fucking that guy Marcus in the office, and the wife would be like, what are you talking about, I'm not fucking Marcus, and I'd have to jump in and be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's about, it's on me, like, it's not black smoke because you're having a black baby. Black smoke because your baby's dead. <laughs> oh shit, wait, no, sorry, that's, that's funny. Sorry, what I meant to say first was knock knock. <laughs> that's my time, thank you very much for my reporter.